Hello, hello, welcome back to my channel. I'm Luana, a nervous system specialist from thegoodhumanacademy.com. In this video, I'm answering the question, how does trauma affect the brain? Now, we know that our brain makes up our sense of ourself, our emotional connection to others, how we see the world, how we perceive being seen by others. It helps us learn, it allows us to grow and become better versions of ourself. How does trauma affect this very important part of us? Well, it's important to know that trauma, unlike many people think, trauma is not in the event itself. Trauma is how our nervous system rewires because it could not complete a stress response. A stress response being that fight, flight, flee, or freeze and fawn response. So the nervous system becomes dysregulated because it could not complete the cycle of stress. It is not in the event. It is how our body rewires due to an overwhelming experience. This could be childhood trauma, consistently being in an environment where mom or dad just didn't like each other, and we grow up and our nervous system is wired in a certain way to detect a threat, or it could be losing someone or multiple people close. It could be a tragedy like a car accident, a breakup, loss of some regard, or a fire, or some sort of thing where the experience was overwhelming for the individual. So it's important to know what trauma is before we get into the brain. So the brain is part of our central nervous system, our brain and our spinal cord. And the autonomic nervous system is branching out from that central nervous system, and that is part of our fight-flight-freeze response system. So I'm going to keep this video short, I'm not going to cover everything about it, but I really want you to know about three parts of our brain. Because a lot of people who I begin to work with or are just getting into understanding the world of somatics, by that I mean the work of Peter Levine, Kathy Kane, and Stephen Terrell, and how healing trauma needs to happen at the level of our body. Because trauma happens at the level of our brainstem. The Trauma and the rewiring of the autonomic nervous system happens at the brainstem, which is the home of our autonomic nervous system. It doesn't happen in the prefrontal cortex. Most people think that we can think our way cognitively through healing trauma. We can make meaning, we can become more compassionate, we can make an understanding, but the actual healing, meaning the rewiring and re-regulation of the nervous system, has to happen at the brainstem, which is the first part of the brain I want to talk about. So we have the brainstem, we have our midbrain and our higher thinking brain. The brainstem is at the very top of our spine and the base of our skull. A lot of folks think, it's, think that it's at the back of our skull, it's actually not. It's kind of right in the center here at the top of our spinal cord. And it is in charge of helping us survive at all costs. So it's known as our survival brain, reptilian brain, some people, you know, the term trauma brain is popular these days when I just can't think straight, I'm thinking in trauma brain. Um, if we have a panic attack and we're still recovering from that, that's our trauma brain because our brainstem is kind of freaking out, it's overwhelmed. So our brainstem is in charge of many things. The basics is in charge of the temperature of our body, in charge of our heart rate, so our cardiovascular system is in charge of our breathing. So this is why I think breathing uh, exercises and uh, breath work is so popular because it um, allows people to have a different physiological state. Uh, it changes the state. It doesn't rewire the nervous system. But I don't want to go on a tangent about that. I want to make a different video about that. So. The brain stem does three main things. Regulates our body temperature, allows us to breathe, it controls our breathing, and it controls our heart rate, our cardiovascular system. It's our survival brain, and that is the core. Everything else, the midbrain and the upper brain, the midbrain being our emotional brain, and the higher brain being our higher thinking, planning and being able to think of abstract thoughts comes after. It's like when we build a house. We need to build the foundation of the house 
and then we built up. If the foundation of the house is faulty, if it has cracks, if it's non-existent, if it's like mud, then what happens? The rest of the house doesn't get built. Same sense. If our brain stem, our lower brain is in survival mode and it is stuck in a trauma response, the rest of our brain won't be able to develop fully. One study I'm thinking about here is the study on the children in Romania uh, back in the early 90s when Romania opened up their borders after being closed for a long time with the dictatorship that was going on there. There were tons of children that were in orphanages and of course the ratio of child to caregivers in those orphanages were, um, you know, off. There was like, I don't know the exact, you can watch videos about it, they're not easy to watch, but often there's like 50 kids to one or two caregivers. And uh, there are studies done that there were blank spots in the children's brain of gray matter because they're, they weren't getting the attention, care, and safety and attunement, that, that attachment system building, uh, because of the neglect, the extreme neglect that they experienced. So this is a one extreme example of our brain's um, effect after trauma. So we need that strong foundation of the house, that regulated foundation of the house for our midbrain to be healthy, to be able to have regulated emotions and not have emotional outbursts. Our Midbrain includes the hippocampus, amygdala, hypothalamus. You may have heard of these parts of our brain. And its main job is to uh, record memories so that we respond to our world based on our memories. This is, again, a trauma response. If our brain is stuck in dysregulation and the effects of trauma, that mid part of our brain is the part that has that implicit memory, so we respond based on our past experiences. Our higher brain, our prefrontal cortex, and our cortex is our higher thinking brain. It allows us to think in abstract thought, make plans for the future. So many folks that I uh, have worked with in the past, it's really hard to make a commitment past next Wednesday. It's really hard to think past next week or even a month out from now. That's that survival brain, when our brain is living with the effects of trauma. We simply don't have the ability to plan ahead. And um, this is when we hear about teenagers making um, impulsive choices and decisions, uh, because that part of our brain, the higher part of our brain, doesn't stop developing until our early, mid-20s. So coming back to how do we heal trauma? It's such a myth that we can think through healing trauma. If trauma happens at our brainstem, the back part of our brain, that survival response, fight, flight, freeze, we need to go to that same place, part of our brain, to heal it. We can't come in with log logical thinking. This is why so many folks that I work with, they've been to cognitive behavioral therapy, these kinds of things, for sometimes decades, and they're still suffering with symptoms of trauma and chronic stress uh, because our it's still kind of new information that we need to heal from the brainstem, the somatic sensory experience of our body. This is why in my programs I work from the level of the body and help and teach people how to feel safety, any sense of safety, starting at the level of our physicality of the body experience um, because this is how we start to build the individual's capacity for safety because if we're living with a trauma brain all the time we're not going to feel safe pretty much never and um, you know hypervigilance is such a kind of brainstem experience the base of our brain at the top of our spine hypervigilance is you know the darting eyes the high heart rate that anxiety that chronic panic um, that's very well known with folks that have grown up in an unsafe home environment or even out in the world if individuals are or have experienced bullying or are a minority 
in our world or simply live in a neighborhood where it's dangerous outside when we walk out our front door. That brainstem will be on high alert and therefore we can't think straight. That causes the brain fog. That wraps up this video. I want to just give you a little taste of the different parts of the brain and how trauma affects our brain. You have your brain stem, the base part of our brain, the foundation of the house, if you will. Then we have the next layer of the house, our midbrain, emotional part of our brain, and then our higher thinking brain. And we need our brain stem to feel safety, regulation, and this sense of, I don't need to be in threat or hypervigilance mode in order for the other parts of our brain to function properly so we can learn and have safe connections in our life. Uh, thank you so much for being here and spending the time with me. If you want to learn more, make sure you stick around the channel, watch my videos. If you want to and are ready to start building that sense of internal safety and regulation for yourself, make sure you check out Nervous System Regulation Made Simple, which is linked below, or go over to my website and check out the other resources. Thank you so much for being here. Take good care. Ciao.